the Thoughty OT podcast. I think it would be, you know, useful to kind of talk about like the romance kind of relationship side of things. Mm. Well, what have you tried in, in terms of that? Or is that kind of on the back burner to developing a friend group? Or, I mean, the more I like, try to invest emotions into it, the more I'm disappointed and feel kind of, I, I, the way I see it is that I will get, I, I, I'm, I'll be as lucky to get a uh, romance as I am to get a full-time paid permanent job. Right, right. What, what have you used I, in the past? Because I know, I know that, you know, that there has been some apps and things that... I've tried different different dating websites, but they're all like uh, fake profiles and right. none of it's real... Not like t- Tinder, Hinge, Bumble. <laughs> Tinder, I mean, Tinder's, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, there isn't it's really not... anything that's actually agency based in terms of agency and agency looking for to, mm. to bring people together. It's more, mm. you know, you get all these fake profiles and you have to scroll down these fake profiles and, oh, these people look very interesting, but these people aren't real. They're, they're not people who are in London. They're people from another country and they're, post, they're posting fake profile pictures. Mm. Mm. It's, it's, mm. it's all a bit of a con, con to me, a bit of a scam sure. to me. So, um. well, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, especially if you're, if you're a man on, on dating sites, it tends to be very, very, very difficult to, to get matches or, <laughs> find find people to, that, that that are willing to match out and talk to you and also even further like go and go and go on actual dates and you yeah. know meet, meet you and stuff like that i know that there are some services for disabled adults but also for autistic people in in terms of like matchmaking and stuff like have you looked into anything like that i've tried but i haven't been successful in uh, finding anything anything that's been helpful long term sure. um sure. so yeah it's tough it and is. I, I think there's a lot of aspects to being autistic that can make it really hard i think in terms of dating like there's so many nuances to um both texting and in in person kind of things everything seems to be very kind of indirect uh very difficult to to understand where where you stand with somebody very and i think that is part and part due to the you know sort of like the modern approach to dating which is very like you know as soon as you see something or you don't feel completely 100 percent like you want to go and see someone it's kind of like oh well i'll just see what else is out there and i'll do that and it kind of goes goes in like a leap for a lot of people it's, I, mean, um, I mean i use social situations like going to london film comic con as practice for going on a date because it will have sure. all the same social anxiety issues the the autism mm-hmm. issues like the loud noise loud noises and stuff like that uh, when i get pictures taken with people at comic con that in itself is like trying to meet someone for a first time and saying hello sure. and you're shaking their hand and putting your arm around you and stuff like that. It's very nerve wracking. And yeah. that is similar to meeting a woman for the first time because you've maybe met someone online and then you're going to see them in person and mm. it's, you're trying to make conversation with them and not come across like you're totally weird, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there there are issues in terms of dating, but I, I suppose, like, you know, even go, going further than that, the, the aspect of maintaining relationships, particularly when it's a neurodiverse one with another uh, another autistic person, even, and, and also particularly with with neurotypicals, holistic individuals, it can sometimes be a very, very, very difficult thing to navigate, and there's a lot of you know, you, you were talking about kind of like fake profiles and stuff, you know, well, there's there's a lot of people who do take advantage of people who um, are struggling to kind of find find someone to develop a relationship with and mm. stuff. And it's definitely something that I've heard about a lot. 
I've also, I've, I mean, I've also almost been conned a couple of times before, but for the most part, they're not very clever about trying to scam me. So, mm. <laughs> so I've kind mm. of seen through it. But yeah, it's you sussed them it, out. If if I was, if I was really really desperate for interaction with a woman online, and I looked at these dating sites, I could get taken in by all of these profiles, and I could spend money to speak, to, to, to get a subscription, to be able to send messages to speak mm. to these people. Because I think most dating websites, you have to pay a subscription to be able to message. Sure. So, so you're kind of just wasting your money in the sense that you don't know if you're going to get anything out of it. I've tried a bit, I've tried a couple of times, but it's nothing good has come out of it. So the, the few times that women have talked to me on dating websites has been basically we just don't have an, anything in common. Hmm. Nothing to nothing, no, no interests. No interests in common. And, no, no. Yeah. 